and my company arrived and ministry arrived and my spiritual life arrived yes i came from a family of idol worship but i made up my mind to go to the other side and and on my way for 10 years i made captivity but i still turn it into a prayer in one minute the grace that makes a man arrive in the name of jesus christ you're going to be seated but i'd like you to pray i just felt that there, this is a place to declare the grace i arrive i arrive this one thing i do forgetting the things that are behind i press on to towards the mark of the high calling in christ i arrive i arrive I didn't start the journey to die in the sea. I didn't start the journey to bow to storms. I didn't start the journey ministry to bow to pressure. I didn't start the journey to bow to status quo. I started intending to arrive. And until I see the other side, I am not yet there. There was a level of the anointing when I began my pursuit for God. You are praying. Hallelujah. Please look up. Hear me. Until you can see the other side, don't stop moving. I arrive does not mean I stop when I was tired. I arrive does not mean I stop because time was going. I arrive means I finally saw physically what was in my spirit when I started. Are we learning? Please sit down. Let's finish up that scripture. I'm just walking you through these scriptures. And they arrived at the country of the Gadarenes, which is over against Galilee. Now, next verse. <laughs> and when he went forth to the land, there met him out of a city a certain man. Now, you would think that when he was done with storms, he would never meet any again. As soon as he arrives the new level, it was not the prime minister who came to greet him. As soon as he arrived there, it was a madman who stood there and the Bible says he had devils long time and wear no clothes, neither abode in any house but in tombs. My first question is who told the madman there were people coming from the other side? I, I can perceive a relationship between the storm and the demons in this man. That as soon as he arrives, he meets the madman who is also like the water and the wind. In this case, the man being the water, the wind being the spirits that had kept him bound for a long time. Follow the discourse. Next verse, please. And the Bible says and when he saw jesus he cried out and fell before him and with a loud voice said what have you, what have i to do with thee jesus thou son of god most high i beseech thee torment me not 29 for he had commanded the unclean spirit you see the formula again not the man every time you see storms whether in human forms whether in whatever the approach is the spirit first jesus did not reply the man like he did not reply the man he did not reply the water he went straight to the wind the spirit component in that situation and the bible says he rebuked he commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man then the Bible gives us added information that for oft times it had caught him and he was kept bound with chains and in fetters and he broke the bands and was driven of them, of the devils into the wilderness. Uh -huh. And Jesus asked him, now that he was free, saying, okay, he's giving us an information. What is thy name? And he said, Legion. Because many devils were entered into him. Watch this. And they besought him that he would not command them to go out into the deep 32 watch this it says and there was there a herd of many swine feeding where on the mountain leave that for another day and they besought him 
that he would suffer them to enter them and he suffered them the word suffer means permit and the bible says and when the devils went out of the man they entered into the swine and the herd ran violently down the steep place into the lake and were choked and they that fed them saw what was done and fled and went and told it in the city and in the country read on then they went out to see what was done and came to jesus and found the man out of whom the devils were departed sitting at the feet of jesus clothed and in his so what kind of mind did he have before because the bible says that he was sitting in his right mind and they were afraid 36 they also which saw it told them by the means that he was possessed of the devil was healed the means that he was possessed of the devil was healed next verse i want to bring out a powerful lesson here now watch this then the whole multitude of the country of the gatherings round about besought him to depart from them for they were taken with great fear and he went up into the ship and returned back again 38 now the man of whom the devils were departed besought him that he might be with him but jesus sent him away with an instruction what was the instruction 39 return to thy house and show how great things god had done unto thee and he went his way watch this and published throughout the whole city how great things jesus had done to him jesus said now that we've done this let's return back so why did they really start the journey all the storms to free one man who was equal to 10 cities now it's very interesting when you study scripture that many times you would see jesus preach in a large crusade then he would be with one person investing the same passion that means in the mind of jesus he looks at things from a destiny dimension that that one man was the evangelist anointed now from hindsight let's reverse the story 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 once upon a land called gadara once upon a time a land called gadara god intending to invade that land decided to invest his dream in a man and satan knowing that that man could save the city now turned that man he made he he started attacking the background of that man and eventually the evangelist that was anointed to save 10 cities was staying in tombs with no clothes are you getting it now jesus intending to save the gatherings had to inconvenience himself to move to the other side the spirits knowing that salvation was coming they did not see jesus they did not see the disciples they saw salvation coming not to the man to the city hold on do you notice that there were certain people that suffered as a result of that salvation that meant that they were prospering because of the bondage in the land the moment the spirit went out some people's businesses went down oh dear there were people who their prosperity was because there was no salvation in that land the economy was rising because the purposes of god were bound as soon as the man was released the spirit and those in allegiance to it went down no other person went down in that city and jesus intending to save a city could it be that the reason why jesus also has been intentional about your destiny is because as he looks at you he's not seeing you he's seen a 90 year old prayer that someone from your family prayed as a missionary and said oh god raise somebody from this family who will wipe the tears of everyone raise somebody from this region and jesus has come 
in honor to that prayer whenever you think it is about you look beyond you whenever you think the attack is about you look beyond you whenever you think the salvation is about you look beyond you every time god comes to you he comes to you because of the destinies connected to you every time satan comes to you he comes to you because of the destinies connected to you there are attacks that have no business happening to you if you were not connected to the kind of destiny you're connected to the attacks have nothing to do with you don't take them personal satan is fighting many people to you that's why the attack looks fierce if it was about you he would not waste his time on you he looked at you madam and he saw an evangelist he looked at you and he saw a prophet he looked at you and he saw a kingdom financier and he said instead of attacking one million people let's stop this woman from having a child let's stop this one from going forward Is someone learning now? This is giving us spiritual intelligence as believers so that we can interpret things from the lens of the spirit, from the lens of prophecy, from the lens of destiny. Now you can rejoice in the office and they may not know why. This woman who has been insulted by everybody, why is it that the more they insult you, the more you rejoice? Tell them I came to House on the Rock and I heard a word by the spirit that corrected my understanding. Number one, that storms happen to all men and storms are very Verification systems that you are really going to the other side. If you did not intend to grow, you will not meet with the challenges. Even Jesus, Jesus and his presence in the boat did not stop the manifestation of the storm. It only stopped the dominion of the storm on the journey. The next thing that I, that I taught you that you need to have at heart is the mind of Christ. There is a mentality that makes men rest in the midst of storms. Can I tell you this? The Bible says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. It says, For thou art with me. That divine presence should be a consolation. Someone declare, say you are with me. Thou art with me thou art with me in the midst of the storm and then when jesus woke up the bible says he rebuked the wind and the storm was calm so the first way we address storms is to rebuke the wind next time go to your shop go to your mall Go to your business, go to your house. You come back and you see your children bringing reports that are not consistent with the word of God. Just kicking and venting anger on the children will not solve the problem. Always remember, Jesus has taught you what to do with storms. It is not the result. It is not the school. It is not the dull child. Remember, Satan does not attack for nothing. In that child is CEO. In that child is the employment of 5,000 people. Don't blame the innocent child and bring ill-spoken ill words over him. You are a failure, you are dull. No! Satan does not attack failures. If you were a Satan, you will not attack failures. That's a waste of time. The Bible says he knows his time is short. So if Satan can handpick people, out of seven billion people when he listed people you were there you need to verify what parameter he used and i've already told you john 10 10 that he only comes when he finds out there is something worth stealing something worth killing and something worth destroying so you can go back and dance in the midst of storms and they ask you why you say number one the storm has verified that i am valuable number two the storm has verified that in me there are nations it is better to forget your paddle than to forget jesus in the boat because if it is to calm storms you don't need skills you need jesus 
you need skills to move but there are times that your skills cannot continue the journey you will need jesus there are times that whatever knowledge you have may not be able to continue with you it is jesus and then remember that in your praise and your rest there is prophecy that you will arrive oh powerful scripture and they and they arrived and they arrived even if it's after 10 years they arrived apostle have not gotten admission for the past five ten years i bring you a word of hope while you are talking about admission prophecy is already saying you arrived apostle as i'm speaking right now there is no place for me to stay i mean this church just laughing but the lord is waiting for me at home right about now i may not know what storms you will face but i can tell you this if jesus is in the boat rejoice look up let me teach you something one plus one mathematically is two is that true one plus one demonically is anything less than two because satan does not add one plus one plus satan cannot be two even if it's not zero it cannot be two because satan does not add one plus one plus jesus is equal to the answer he puts there the moment you add jesus to the equation the answer is no longer scientific the answer is not longer economic the answer is is no longer mathematics it is the answer he puts there so he can take 10 years of delay plus two years of being raised by a single mom plus 15 years of unemployment plus jesus and he can put one year of victory that is equal to 30 years five years of a wayward life plus two years of limited understanding in church plus a job that may not give you so much plus your passion and fire for god then plus jesus and you will be surprised to see what the answer will be the answer will be the destiny of someone who started working hard from four years and you say this is not fair and he says jesus not, does not only add he can supplement anything plus jesus is the answer he puts there let me tell you something we're wrapping up there is a very interesting parable i wish i had the time to deal with in scripture it was a parable about employment the bible says a vine owner was drawing people to get into his field have you read that that parable and he negotiated for a denary with certain people early in the morning is that true so their basis for going to the field was not because they loved the vine owner it was because they negotiated for a denary he took them to the field later on he saw some others and said why sittest thou idle they said no man employ us and he said go they didn't negotiate they went because of love and honor to the man even at the 11th hour one hour to the close of work he still met another he said go at the end of it he paid those who came because they wanted payment then those who came because they believed him he said now let me decide how to pay you paid them the same amount and they said no there is injustice here and jesus said what is the injustice i know you came from a lineage of millionaires i know you came from a lineage of those who bless you and maybe that may be your motivation for loving jesus it was not really because you loved him it was because there was an opportunity you were told that if you stay with him he can bless you oh dear spiritual employee you go to the vineyard your dinner is coming but then there are others who said lord if you can make any sense out of this life my background has cheated me already and he said also come and join and when it is time for payment 
when he's allocating graces and possibilities he can bring the grace of one oh dear i'm saying this prophetically because there are people after this conference you will stand side by side with those who started being diligent even before you were born again and they will wonder and say but this is not fair and you will tell them the problem is not me the problem is the one who carried me along in his boat jesus christ being in your boat can make the difference and they arrived and they arrived and they arrived and he met the man at gadara rebuked the spirit out of that man and the man said i want to follow you back he said no i came because of you now that i'm done with you i can release you to live out your assignment now listen to me victory over storms has a purpose to it the purpose is that jesus be revealed and that jesus be glorified when the storms that have attempted to impede your progress are over let it not be that when you have built houses and cars and everything you say my power and the might of my hand has given me this he says but thou shall remember that means you can forget i brought a simple message but a powerful one tonight because everybody here under the sound of my voice if there is no storm before you now i can tell you it is proof that you have not yet made a decision to go to the other side but if it is the other side of business the other side of your spiritual life the other side of your kingdom exploits the other side in millions then there is a storm that is before you here is my advice check that jesus is in the boat before the storm comes the storm will not respect you it will only respect jesus who is in that boat as you carry your certificate verify whether jesus is there as you carry your track record of business exploits realize a day will come dear peter where your net may not be able to catch fish if your net does not catch fish it is not it is not laziness there are times that the fish will not come you will need jesus it is only jesus who can tell the fish to come some of you are in this situation right now you've exhausted everything you know to do intellectually spiritually economically etc and you are right now in a confused position not knowing what to do number one find rest storms happen to everybody even jesus number two have the mind of christ you know that jesus is in the boat so find rest it will not kill you there is an end number three have the mind of christ superior understanding superior understanding that satan is a master of the sense realm he will manipulate you into depression and then you will find out that the challenge every challenge comes in its inflated form it takes rest the rest of faith to deflate it down sometimes you will worry over things that are not as serious as they look and then jesus taught us how to deal with storms that you speak over the wind and say in the name of jesus this wind making my marriage boisterous this wind making my academics boisterous my job my business this wind making nigeria boisterous this wind making my political career my ministerial calling boisterous peace shalom be still and the bible says the wind and even the water obeyed him and then obtain the staying power to continue until you arrive and when you arrive remember that the arrival has a purpose don't dive and begin to celebrate and forget that 
there is a madman who holds the salvation of 10 cities waiting for. Could it be that the reason why God wants to prosper you is so that you can meet a child someday, pay that child's school fees, who will be the owner of a bank tomorrow, and employ 5,000 people. Can I tell you this? Every time you see the madman in Gadara, look beyond not being clothed. Every time you see a madman in Gadara, they will not come to you as great people. They will come to you as people with their filth. They will come to you as people who are outcasts. They will come needing you. It is amazing that on the other side of your success, the first person you meet is the destiny sent to you. You must have the discernment to not allow the beauty of success be cloud you. As a man of God, when God grants you an anointing after the storms, the attacks, and and now you come to a position of power and influence. Do not forget. For every arrival, there is a madman crying. Businessmen, for every arrival, there is a madman crying. He's holding the destiny of ten cities. Some of you have arrived. And all you are doing at the seashore is a party celebration. And there are madmen crying and saying, is this not why you came? Did he anoint you to just do church? Man of God, now that you have arrived in a measure, what are you doing with that anointing? I am doing ministry. Ministry, I am enjoying myself. Wake up! There is a madman who is waiting for you. There is a young man who you need to lift in ministry who will be strengthened and go and save his family and save other generations. Please hear me. We are wrapping up, but you have to get this lesson. For everyone who arrives, and it's a language we like to use in Nigeria, I have... Let me tell you the next assignment. Look for the madman in Gadara. When you arrive, it's proof that you conquered the storm. So we celebrate you for beating the storm hands down. But realize every time you arrive, your next assignment is to locate the madman in Gadara for the sake of the Gadarenes. Rise up on your feet, please. We're going to pray just three prayer points tonight. Prayer point number one will be that God would grant us the strength to have the resilience to have the stamina and the staying power to continue when the storms of life come i wish i would tell you storms would not, not come but i'll be lying to you if you want to get to the throne the pathway is the cross oh joseph if you want to sit with pharaoh be ready to enter the well, go to the prison. I said it in a teaching somewhere that the prison is where both good and bad people meet. Every time you see people in the prison, be careful because Joseph is there too. Not everybody is a criminal. Every time you see men on the cross, be careful Jesus is there too. He is just between two thieves. He may not be a thief. This is already a word for someone. Don't generalize people. You may see Joseph in the prison, but not everybody got there because of a crime of their own. You may see men hanging on various crosses. Don't generalize. Jesus is there too. He's not dying for himself. He's dying for the world. There are thieves that pay the price for their own foolishness, but there are others who are dying for others. You must have the grace to discern. Are you ready to pray? Prayer point number one. Lord, I obtain grace that as I start this journey to the other side, regardless the storms that come, I will arrive. Lift your voice and pray. Please pray. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Shabrando, 
Shapragata Bakatuska de Brendega de Belegata. In the name of Jesus, I declare, I am determined to go to the other side spiritually. I am determined to go to the other side financially. I am determined to go to the other side in destiny. Regardless the storms that I face, declare that I intend to arrive Jesus is with me are you praying Obtain grace. Though I walk through the valley, Lord, I'll feel no evil. By the water, still my my heart will trust in you. My heart will 